that. I finished the uh, landing gear and installed it on the airplane. I've had a chance to fly it about a half a dozen times. And so far, the landing gear look, works great. In fact, as you'll see from the video clips I have later, a few landings I did with it, uh, it actually took quite a bit of abuse. <laughs> my, landing, my landings with it so far aren't that great. This is our torsion box that we installed inside the fuselage. It's made out of basically multiple pieces of eighth inch plywood. And you can see there's, an, there's basically a notch right here, a notch here, a notch here, and a notch there. There's also a couple of slots that are milled in the bottom here. Those are there to accept these two rubber O-rings on the landing gear. These rubber O-rings go clear around the landing gear and they allow me to set the rubber o-ring down on the bottom of this torsion box and not have this part of the landing gear touch touch any of the material inside the airplane that will make it so that that can spring right there also another advantage to this these o-rings is they do absorb some of the a little bit of landing loads especially fore and aft loads so those two o-rings actually fit into those two slots just like that then you remember we made this carbon fiber plate and you'll notice that I put two aluminum straps across the top that's because carbon fiber is very brittle and it's possible with the twisting loads caused by this landing gear for the screws to actually rip out the sides of this carbon fiber plate so I put these two aluminum straps across here, about 30 thousandths thick aluminum straps to help protect the carbon fiber from ripping out. Now this plate will go and it will, and it will rest, the bottom of this plate will rest right on top of the O-rings. So it will also leave a space between the bottom of the landing gear here and the bottom of this plate so that the spring portion can rise and fall in the fuselage. These go, this plate goes in right like that. Now the, the rear screws, I just put wood screws in the rear because they don't take much load in normal operation. We first fasten these screws in loosely. Then we take our wood screws and put in the rear. Go ahead and snug those down. Got that one tightened down. And we'll tighten these ones in front. And when we tighten these down tight, these screws go all the way through the, the uh, torsion bar box. And on the back side of the torsion box, I have a nut plate for each one of these screws. We tighten that down. Same with the other side. puts a slight amount of crush on those rubber o-rings so now you can see our our gear is still springy but it doesn't move back and forth and it doesn't twist the gear doesn't twist or torque around okay you probably noticed that uh, I've yet to fare this area in where we cut out to install the landing gear the reason I haven't done that yet, normally I would make a filler that goes in here or a cover that goes over this whole area, is because on this particular airplane, this scoop is a functional scoop and it's not, uh, not very scale. I think it'd look better if it was more scale. So I'm actually going to make a mold for this and I'm going to make a cover that actually uh, replaces this scoop and then covers over this whole landing gear area and kind of fares this in. To thoroughly wrap up this video, I figured I needed to cover a few things that I didn't cover very well earlier. Um, most of those pertain to the fact that if you, not everybody's going to want to build a scale type landing gear like I did for my Yak. 
I basically did the video of that landing gear simply because that's about the most difficult type of carbon fiber gear you can build. But most often people would build like a flat plate landing gear like this one here that I showed you earlier. Compared to the landing gear for my Yak, it's much easier to make one of these. Um, my Yak landing gear it took me about, uh, from start to finish, about seven or eight hours of labor over about three days to build it. One of these landing gears, now granted I've been doing composite work for about 30 years, so I'm pretty fairly good at it. Uh, takes me about two and a half, three hours to make one of these landing gears. Uh, there's also a couple of rule th rules of thumb that I'd like to cover uh, in sizing the landing gear. Uh, specifically in how many layers of unidirectional, which is the strength bearing part of the landing gear, to put in the landing gear in order to get the spring rate that you desire. After you get the landing gear done, you'll find out if its spring rate is, the right, is right or not. Now, if it comes out that the landing gear is too stiff, you can actually carefully either change the width or change the thickness, carefully sand the thickness of the landing gear to get the spring rate to come down. That's by far not the preferred option. Generally, the carbon fiber landing gear is strongest if the fibers go all the way from one side clear to the other in one continuous length. When you start sanding on it, you start breaking the fibers, and so it gets uh, considerably less strong. So usually I aim to make it slightly weak, in other words, slightly less, slightly more springy than I need it to be, because it's much easier to later lay on another layer over the landing gear uh, than, like I say, it is to take it away. This particular landing gear is for that I built was is for an airplane that weighs about one pound. The top of the landing gear is about an inch wide. This particular landing gear has about five layers of unidirectional carbon fiber in it and in reality it's a little too stiff for a one pound airplane. You basically need to lay lay up about one to one and a half layers of unidirectional carbon fiber per pound per inch of width. Now normally what I do is I'll take and do one layer per pound roughly and then I'll widen it as I get heavier with the airplane because you also need to cover loads, fore and aft loads, and the wider it is the more loads you can cover and the easier, the better that load transfers into the fuselage. It also usually looks more scale to be wider as you get, get up in the bigger airplanes. And if you go like an eighth inch wider per pound you can usually keep it to right around one, one layer per pound of airplane weight. Now there's two ways of springing the landing gear. Some landing gear will, this will be the spring portion of the gear, the actual leg. In that case, usually the top is wider just to support it for fore and aft loads like I mentioned earlier, and it's plenty strong. In that case, it's acceptable to drill holes through the landing gear to directly mount it to the fuselage. If on the other hand, like my yak gear, this center portion is the spring of your landing gear and the legs themselves are very stiff, it's not advisable to drill holes in the top of this landing gear and the reason for that is, is it'll usually break right through the holes. So in that case, I normally mount it either with a fixed plate that mounts and, and sandwiches this between the fuselage and the plate or like in my yak, my preferred method, is to use the O-ring method where I put an O-ring around this and actually encase this in rubber between the two plates. That also absorbs a lot of shock loads so it, it makes it so that I can get by with a much lighter torsion box structure in the fuselage in order to get the same amount of strength and not have it fail. Now to handle the taper in the legs you basically take your like for instance this is a one inch piece of carbon fiber one inch wide layers, then I would take them in the mold and I would actually just fold over the carbon fiber to make the taper. Uh, when you get done, it'll actually be thicker at the bottom than at the top, but you need that because you made it narrower, so you're going to need more material there. Plus, I like my landing gear to be springier at the top than at the bottom. But anyway, if you have any additional questions that I didn't uh, or I didn't cover something that you want to know, 
please post your question in the comments below or you can go on rcplanemaker.com and uh, post your question in the forums there. And uh, I hope you find this video useful and uh, we'll make some more videos on other things in the future. So now we'll go out and do some flying. I'll uh, show you a little flight footage of the Yak and then uh, at the end I'll just put several takeoffs and landings on so you can see how this gear works. Thanks for watching.